Alrighty, so that explanation of the chain of a retail to comic book to DC to blah, 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 all the stuff I just talked about sort of got away from me in, in how long it took to explain, which is actually good, I think, because it is a complicated subject. So what I'm actually going to do is make this episode zero of the playlist, and then after this, every episode is going to be another uh, dive into previous catalogs. So this really is just an overview, basically, of the entire um, idea of comics supply chains and how it all comes from an artist's pencil and a writer's, you know, keyboard into your hands, however many months later. Howdy, nerdsters. Uh, back again for another video. Um, today I thought we would do something a little bit different and start uh, a series that I was hoping to start talking about uh, previews and solicitations, something that has been... Um, more important to me in the last, I don't know, year since I started really understanding the way that comics worked, and what I'd like to do is start a series where basically, if you are familiar with this type of, of catalog with previews, the way it works is that every month there is a physical book released to comic book stores, which gives the uh, contents that they are going to be able to order and sell, I believe it's about three months down the road. So this is going to be containing things shipping between um, sort of the end of December into January. I believe it's really the, it's really the, the G it's called the November previews, but it's really the January shipment items. So what I would like to do is, is every month I'd like to basically go through this catalog and show you anything that I find interesting. It's usually released towards the end of the month around about like the 20th or the 21st, somewhere in that third week of a month. But to start this off, I figured we would do a little bit of the, not the history, but the the way that previews, solicitations, and the chain of supply works with comic books. So for this first episode, we're going to do a little bit of introductory uh, information about the way comic book stores work and why the previews catalog and online solicitations is something that you should really be paying attention to if you want your local comic book shop to have a much easier time <laughs> uh, of ordering and understanding what their customers really are looking for. All right, so in order to understand really what the previews guide is, we have to understand how it comes uh, to be on a Wednesday that you can go into a shop and pick up your comic book of choice. So for example, today is Wednesday. You can go into a comic book shop, which usually stocks um, their new comic books on Wednesday mornings, and you can pick up any of the new releases that are coming out today being November, uh, I don't know, like 12th or whatever it is today. <clears throat> so you can pick up any items that are coming out on that day. But how did that book, let's say it's the new Hawkeye book, right? How did it get to to be on the comic book shelf and what were the processes and where's the money uh, that sort of makes this happen for you and me to go and buy stuff. So what you have to understand is that this entire thing goes through so many different hands before it gets to you. So really for DC and Marvel, those are the books that those are the publishers I'm going to be talking about today because there aren't in terms of my understanding, I don't really know exactly how smaller independent presses work and I mostly understand I believe how DC and Marvel and larger places like that work and really what previews catalog is is for people who are looking to see what's coming out from very large companies because it's not cheap um, to sort of have this much you know space and and dedicated spotlight and stuff to your books so what this really is 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 for big publishers like Dark Horse, Image, DC, Marvel Boom Studios, um, uh, Fanagraphics, um, all of those different types of, of larger studios that have a, uh, a, an established um, you know, fan base and stuff like that. So, so this is mostly going to be talking about that. If you're looking for indie books and small stuff, Previews Catalog is not really the place to go because it's not really where those things are put out and talked about. Those are more of passed around online, you know, microblogs and sort of conventions and and different places like that, but previews is more for the big, you know, four or five um, companies who are really looking to spotlight what they're going to be selling or is available for sale in the next two or three months. So to understand a comic like Hawkeye, let's let's break down the steps, right? Hawkeye arrives in your store on Wednesday. 
I go and buy Hawkeye on Wednesday for whatever the price is, let's say four dollars. Right? Now let's look at how it got to that point and let's work backwards, right? So the comic book shop, which happens to be the name of my local comic book shop, is just called that. But if you were to go to any comic book shop, they basically had to place an order for the number of Hawkeye issues they wanted to arrive on that Monday or Tuesday many months ago, okay? They said that something was coming out. They saw, they read in the previous catalog that something was coming out in November, a Hawkeye issue number five or whatever it is. And they have to basically decide how many people are going, they believe, are going to buy that book from them. This is why comic book stores really, really, really love subscribers. Um, and what I mean by that, or people who do pull lists. Somebody who, the store basically will say, all right, you know, you go into there and you tell them, I'm interested in Hawkeye, Batman, Justice League, and uh, Spider-Man books. And they'll say, okay, we will buy for you all of these books and collect them in your folder. And you can come in on Wednesday or whenever it is, once a month, however you want to do it. And you can get all these books from us and pay for them then. That is, for them, by far the best way to do it. Why? Because they know that you're going to buy that book, right? If, if, you, if there are, so let's say, 20 people subscribed to the Hawkeye series at your comic book store... They know right there that they can order 20 copies. Those 20 copies will be sold, and boom, just like that, they have made a guaranteed um, profit, or they've made money on those 20 copies. But for everybody who comes into the store and doesn't have a subscription but wants to buy Hawkeye on that day, it's basically a guessing game, right? Because they have to say, all right, Hawkeye is you know this popular. There's this movie coming out now. People love Jeremy Renner, and uh, Age, of, Age of Ultron just came out two weeks ago. You know, it obviously didn't now, but ergo, we're going to order 15 more copies of Hawkeye than we have for subscriptions because those 15 copies we can put on this on the store shelves and we believe that they will sell out by next week or by next month, whatever it is. So this is the same as, as basically any retail store. You know, for example, I work at Trader Joe's, so I'm going to use that as an example. Up until very recently, I was writing the snack order, right, for chips and crackers and all that kind of stuff. So I have to go in every day. So for me, you know, it's just a daily order, which is much, much easier to calibrate. Imagine having to order something two or two months out, right? Three months out. So I have to go in every day and say, based on the projections, based on how much people like this product, what uh, we're going to sell, you know, 150 cases of whatever chip. So I have to punch in that order. It comes in. Now, the good thing about that is because it's a daily order and because it deals with such high volume, let's say I accidentally bring in three cases of some chip I didn't need that doesn't really matter because the chip is the chip every day, right? There's always going to be salt and vinegar potato chips. There's always going to be barbecue potato chips and people will go to the store and understand that. And if I order 10 cases of barbecue potato chips, you know, they will sell out by three weeks from now, whatever, because people always want to buy barbecue potato chips. The problem with ordering for comic books is that let's say, you know, to, to increase this analog, let's say you wanted to order barbecue potato chips, but every week, the potato chip has a slightly different flavor, right? It has a slightly different, uh, maybe the manufacturer is different. So, you know, so maybe there's a different artist on the book. Maybe there's a different writer on the book. Maybe it's a different storyline. So basically you're stuck in this spot where you have to order books that you believe will sell well, but if you over order, it's not something like food or anything else where it eventually will sell down because people are coming in to get that. If you over order and put in an order for 200 copies of Hawkeye number 16, and, oh shit, nobody likes Hawkeye number 16. Guess what? You're stuck with 200 extra Hawkeye 16s that you paid for as a comic book store and that nobody is going to take off your hands. So then you put them in the back issue bin. They start going for $1 or $2 instead of the 3 or $4 you could have sold them for on the day, on the week that they were released. And you just, you know, cut your, your margins down from making $4 on a book to making $2 on a book. So that's why previews is so important for comic book stores. And if we back this up a further step, you have comic book stores and you have Diamond uh, distributors. And Diamond is the company that publishes um, previews and these different um, solicitations and things. And Diamond is basically, I, I believe there are other distributors, but Diamond is far and away the most um, dominant and sort of monopolistic of all the distributors. So DC, Marvel, everybody else who has a large stake in the market will sell their books to Diamond will have Diamond distribute the books. So Diamond has all of these books in warehouses. 
that DC and Marvel and all these other companies have, have given to them. The comic book stores then tell Diamond how many copies of a book they want. Diamond ships the book to them. They sell it, right? So backing up further from that, you have DC and Marvel who are taking these books and are you know, selling them at a certain price, a direct dis distribution price to Diamond, and then Diamond is selling them at a certain price to comic book stores. And then further back from there, you have DC and Marvel who are basically paying you know, uh, the artist, the writer, the colorist, the inker, the editor, all these different people. So you start out with, you can see where this chain builds. There is, let's say, a page rate of $300 for an artist. So DC or Marvel has to put down X amount of money for, to the artist, to the editor, to the colorist, to the letterer, to the writer. So there is some amount of money stored into that. Then they have to print off however many, let's say 200,000 copies. These numbers are totally arbitrary just to illustrate my point. I have no idea what you know, the actual comic book numbers are being sold. So they have to print out 200,000 copies. So DC or Marvel is now in the hole. They have put in money to the creative teams to produce the book, and they have put in money to print the book. They now have to turn around and sell that book at a increased margin for them, a slight margin, to dis distribution companies. So now DC and Marvel have sold that book to Diamond. It is now off of their hands, right? They hopefully have increased the price of some amount, right? So they're selling it for, let's say, a dollar, whatever it is, I don't know, to Diamond. And they now, in their mind, have made back that money. They have made the money that they needed to continue that uh, series on. Now, Diamond has this book and they need to sell it to comic book retailers. So then there's a some percentage increase in there. They sell it to comic book retailers. Comic book retailers put in an order for $400 of stuff or whatever it is. So they put in their order for these books. These books get packed up by Diamond and shipped to comic book retailers. Now the comic book retailer now has to turn around and sell it to you for the MSRP or the suggested retail or whatever Marvel is selling these books for to at the end of the day make their small margin of profit, right? So we're talking about cutting off margins on margins on margins on margins, you know? Uh, if a book is sold for $5 at a comic book store, you know, some of these more expensive Marvel ones are sold at four or five bucks. They sell it for four or five bucks. They paid whatever it is, a dollar or two for it. You know, Diamond paid however much from DC. DC had a rate of however many cents it costs for the printing of all of these different books. So all of this sort of chain creates where we are now. And this is important because, like I said, comic book stores operate on very slim margins. Because if they fuck up an order and they put in too many, then they're going to have things sitting on the shelf, which have been paid for by them and are not being bought by anybody. Or if they fuck up an order the other way, they're going to have they're going to be losing sales. You know, if you go in onto the store and say, "I want to buy Hawkeye number 16," and they don't have it, they just lost money that, that they could have um, gained by having that book in stock. So when you walk into a comic book store, you have to understand that everything in there has been paid for. You know, the comic book stores are the real customers of DC and Marvel. That's really what it is. DC and Marvel and whoever else are, are really selling to these comic book stores so that they can then turn around and hand sell books or put people on subscription lists and do all their business like that. But, but in actuality, you know, the people that DC and Marvel are talking to and are selling to are really the comic book store owners and the orderers for comic book stores. Now, in more recent years, this has been uh, subverted a little bit by the rise of both digital and direct market stuff um, ordering. So, you know, Comixology, for example, is a really prominent digital service where you can just go on and buy some digital copy for, for usually less money than the physical retail version of that. So if you like a, a character or a series or whatever, you can get things on sale for, for huge amounts because all you're doing is you're paying directly to the publisher who puts that out. Comixology takes their chunk, but most of it goes directly to the publisher. So that kind of uh, circum, circumvents the entire um, ordering chain. And then the other thing that you have to think about is places like in-stock trades or um, different direct ordering, DCBS, direct comic book services, where you or I can just go on, Kitty Cat, stop it. Where you and I can just go on to uh, a website and basically place an order for something at the distribution price. You know, if we don't really feel like we need to go in and talk to a comic book store owner or we want to subscribe to comic book stores like that, 
we can just totally uh, get around that process for most things and order, order books at reduced prices if you're just getting it physically for yourself and you're not going to be going in and subscribing or really, you know, getting stuff from your local comic book store. So all in all, that spiel is basically to help you understand why previews and solicitations are important. Because to be somebody who's supporting the comic book industry and supporting your local comic book stores or buying um, books that you want directly, you know, it doesn't have to be through a local comic book store. You have to be, or in my opinion, you should be, somebody who's informed about what's coming out, what you're interested in, and letting your comic book store owners or different publishers know that you're interested in their stuff. Because there's such a large upfront capital investment on everybody's behalf to get that product out to you that if they don't know that pre-orders are high, if there aren't that many people who are expressing interest in something, then there's not going to be as much stock or as many printings or as much um, of that product out there because it's too much of a risk to print, to ship, to distribute, and then to ultimately stock on your shelf a product that you don't know is going to sell. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please give me a subscribe or a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you did not, please leave a comment down below. Um, I'm sure if I had any incorrect information on here, somebody will correct me. And I'm almost guaranteed that I had something that was incorrect. So, uh, you know, this is just me explaining it to the best of my understanding from mostly from listening to podcasts with uh, retailers and, and different people like that. So this is how I understand the supply chain working, and I believe it is accurate. Please correct me once again, like I said, if, if it's not. But uh, come back in a week. I'll have more content, and right after this, I'm going to be posting the actual um, breakdown of this bad boy right here because mostly I ended up just talking about <laughs> uh, other esoteric uh, things about how actually comics are made. So, But I think it's important stuff to know, damn it. Like, you know, you have to understand why you're into a certain hobby and how you can support the hobby and how it works. And, and for me, that's exactly what Nerd Ventures is all about, is really getting into the, uh, the deep, you know, deep dives into understanding what exactly comic books and, and nerd culture powers, you know, how the world of nerd culture is powered. And, and you know, ultimately, it is about money, uh, which is something that is hard to sort of look in the face when you think about how important a lot of characters and stories are to people. You know, the hard fact of it is that that money drives a lot of this industry and you have to understand why your comic book store needs you to behave in certain ways and let them know what you want to do and, and, you know, have predictable ways that they can order. It's very important to get all this stuff under your belt if you're going to be a super nerd, right? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please follow me at thenerdventure.tumblr.com if you would like to keep up with me um, and my posts on there. And if not, subscribe, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you'd like on YouTube, and I would love to interact with you in the comments. I'll see you next week.